Parents who let their kids watch TV or mobile phones for a fuss-free meal? Beware. A new study says screen time could be linked to developmental issues. It is advising against the rising trend of using screen time as a child-minding tool. Now, we have lead authors of the study here, Dr. Jennifer King and Dr. Kang ying Ki, both from the Pediatrics Department at the Kutekwa National University Children's Medical Institute at NUH. Dr. King, Dr. Kang, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Um, Dr. King, we've heard of you know, many global recommendations on limiting screen time for children, but are parents following these recommendations? And if not, how will your new study help to achieve that? Well, when we first conducted the study, we were concerned that the children with developmental behavioural and emotional conditions that we were seeing in our clinic as referrals from Polyclinic, mm. these kids were getting quite a lot of screen time. And we conducted the study to try and better understand what was going on and what were the screen time viewing patterns. And uh, what we found in our study, which has just been published in the annals of uh, Academy of Medicine, is that... Um, the families um, that we were seeing were not necessarily following screen time guidelines, but at the time, mm -hmm. there weren't a lot of guidelines out yet at the time. Um, what we found was that children were getting quite a lot of screen time in excess of two hours a day, and around 13 months of age was when it was first introduced. And if screen time was introduced under 12 months of age, then it was most likely to be introduced for feeding purposes. And if children had a lot of screen time in the past, but parents had cut it down, yeah. then these kids were more likely to have problems with attention, aggression, and behavioral concerns that parents reported. Uh, the clinical implications you mentioned there a bit, but could you perhaps elaborate on how it can cause you know, conditions like speech and language difficulties, obesity, and even social impairments, for example? So what we understand is that when children are placed in front of a screen or device when their brain is developing, yeah. um, it actually can affect the way the brain makes sense of information around them. And the main thing about screen is that screen is a one-way interaction for children, and children learn social interaction and communication from two-way social engagement, which is the to and fro, mm. which is really important from caregivers. They get the inputs from caregivers, from what they see, what they hear, what they touch, what they feel. So they can't develop speech well when it's just put in a screen in front of them because it's only one way. So it really needs to be a two-way two -way. communication. Yes. Dr. Kang, uh, let's bring you in. So the study assessed 225 children aged 0 to 5 years old. Uh, is the age at which screen time is being introduced to a child significant? Yes, it is. I mean, the younger the child is, mm. the more vulnerable the brain is to the effects of screen time. And as, as you've rightly mentioned, some negative effects of screen time related to development include language delays, mm. social communication deficits, and problems with self-regulations. That's why the current recommendations are that children less than 18 months should not get any screen time, and that children between 18 to 36 months mm. should limit the screen time to less than one hour per day. And in our study, as Dr. Mm. King had mentioned, the children were averaging between two to four hours a day at one mm. year old. So you're saying that the later, the better? Yes. Okay. Um, your study says early introduction in the first year of life is related to mealtime routines. I think many parents can agree that, you know, the screen time can assist in the feeding experience. So why is this an important finding in your study? You're right. I mean, we didn't specifically study why parents were using screen time mm. for feeding. Mm. Um, we just asked them to tell us what were the common instances where you were using screen time for and for the less than ones, feeding came up tops. Um, from our clinical experience, it seems like we might not have age-appropriate expectations around feeding for young children. So, for example... Young children for about one years of age would be expected to have about 10 to 15 minutes of attention for feeding, but we might be expecting the children to sit there for much longer. We might also not be getting very good ideas about the portions that young children need. I think our culture is one that would like to feed the child 
more. It's a, it's an <laughs> act of love. Yes. And but sometimes children had enough and decide they, are, they tell you that no, I'm done. But in order to complete the meal, mm. the parent then you know needs to use the screen time because then that distracts the child. Mm. Uh, you know, Dr. King, I'm sure screen content that plays a part too. There is high quality educational mm. programming or interactive ones, yes. and you have your regular cartoons as well. So to what extent does that influence the child's development? So I think we didn't study content per se in our study, mm. but there is a literature out that shows that high quality programming is preferred. But if you give a small child under three years of age high quality programming, it is also associated with speech language delays, with delays in social engagement, with delays in attention. So there is actually a threshold at which you don't want to be giving screen time, and that is you don't want to be giving it too early in life. But we don't exactly know what that threshold is, which is why there can be differences in guidelines. And I might um, defer to my colleague, Dr. Kang, about the, the national guidelines that have come out in Singapore. Yeah. Well, what about those <clears throat> guidelines? Because, I mean... We know there are these recommendations, right? But at the end of the day, it is really about changing these mm. old habits. Mm. And sometimes it's not just parents, it's the caregivers, it's mm. the grandparents as well. So how do we get everyone on board to, you know, try to not use screen time as a child minding tool? It, a healthy screen time journey actually starts much earlier than most families think. It starts from the prenatal period when the family starts getting pregnant, People, you know, the adults that will be involved in the care of the child could become more aware of their own screen using habits and mm. start to make necessary changes so that they become good role models um, for their, their, their children, their child to come. And um, when the child is born, actually very early on, like I would say before six months of age, we would suggest strategies like using play pens and play yards, put your child in there and let this space be grow up to be a safe, screen-free and mm. fun place for your child so that when the child becomes more mobile, you can actually scoot off to use the bathroom, cook a meal, eat a biscuit and know that your child is safe without needing to use the screen. So it actually takes quite preemptive steps rather than, oh, I have a child that's crying and screaming in front of me, what tools do I have in my pocket to pull out at that moment? Okay, I mean, it's not as easy to change some of these of old course. habits, but I'm sure we'll get there one day. And Dr. King, Dr. Kang, thank you very much for uh, coming in to speak with us. Yeah, thank you for inviting us. Th that was uh, Dr. Jennifer King and Dr. Yang King Yi from Kutik Wat National University Children's Medical Institute at NUH.